Hello everyone, and welcome to another Miss Creepy Story. This one's called, The Tunnel. I was all about five years old. My mother was pregnant with what was going to be my little sister. Myself. Her and my father were out on a fishing trip at a nearby river in Montana. The road to this area often fell into states of ridiculous disrepair. Specific areas that you had to drive exceptionally carefully if the vehicle you were going didn't have four-wheel drive. The surrounding area was serene but somewhat creepy at times. This particular event happened in mid-June. Being still relatively high up in the mountains, it's not uncommon for the weather to still be pretty cool and wet. This day was no exception. One side of the road was a steep decline that went to the river. The other side is an even steeper incline that goes up into thick trees and dense fog on this particular day. We had been fishing for a bit of a while with mild success. I know this because if my father was in a good spot, you couldn't move him for all the money in the world. So the fact that we got back into the car from our initial fishing spot and proceeded to drive down the road indicated that my dad was not pleased with his luck at that particular bend of the brook. The three of us were in an old Chevy coupe, my parents up front and me by my lonesome in the middle of the backseat. My father got to talking as he would do and probably drove a little further than he had intended. He slowly came to a stop when he realized we had come to a point in the road that went into what used to be an old railroad tunnel. The tunnel wasn't that long, maybe half a mile at the most, but it got dark very fast if you went into it. Regardless of its short stretch, the light on the other side felt like the exit to the other side was miles away. Dad. You know, they say these tunnels are haunted by people who kill themselves on the train tracks. Mom, stop it, you're gonna scare him. Dad. Well, I'm just letting him know. Should we go through and something happens? My father leaned over the driver's seat and looked at me wide-eyed. At an older age, I would have thought it humorous. At five years old, it was terrifying. Something about the very sight of the tunnel unnerved me. Even before my father's grandstanding, I didn't want to go in there. Had there been a back door to the car, I would have considered bailing out as my father drove closer. The car crept along at what felt like a turtle crawl. It took no time at all for darkness to completely envelop everything. It was so dark inside the car that I couldn't even clearly see my parents, who were a foot away from me within seconds. Suddenly, it became slightly luminescent as my father popped the round lever that turned on the headlights. There were various bits of debris and rock that had to be navigated around inside of the tunnel. Little bits of barb and concrete that had fallen to the dirt many years before we had decided to traverse this eerie passage. The car came to a sudden halt. Within a second, the lights had been turned off and the engine died. Me. Mom. Dad. Oh no. Mom. Stop it. You're scaring him. Knock it off. My father let out a slight chuckle through me and my mother was far from amused. The laughter quickly ceased from my dad when he turned the key to the old Chevy, only to hear a click sound in response. Dad, now what the hell? Mom, stop messing around. Turn the car back on. Dad, I'm not. Thud. Suddenly the whole car felt as though it hopped into the air. Like we had hit a small ramp while moving at a considerable speed. Except no such thing happened. We were utterly still. Dad. What the hell was that? Mom. What? What are you doing? I. Dad. Dear. I didn't do that. Thud. 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 Three huge bumps. It was as if a sizable invisible hand was violently rocking the car. My father was now cursing up a storm and frantically turning the key. The car wouldn't respond at all. The car was now rocking without pause. My mother became hysterical. Terrified, I covered my eyes. Then came the screams. At first, I thought it was the frantic cries of my mother. But within seconds, I realized that there were two sets of screams, 
my mom's, and a much more ear-piercing and sinister scream that sounded as if it was right behind me. At this age, I had never known what it was like to hear someone scream as if they were dying or about to die. But I knew even at that young age that the screams I heard behind me must have been what they sounded like, and the clawing. There were frantic clawing sounds, like an animal was trapped in a metal box and trying desperately to escape. I felt my mother's arms wrap around me. As much of a moment of relief as this was, I could still hear the screaming and clawing. I was still so terrified, I didn't dare open my eyes. My mother's grip began to feel tight. She must have been as scared as I was. Gradually, the embrace tightened to where I started to have trouble breathing. I went to open my mouth to say something, but my mom's hand covered it before I could even breathe a word. She had felt ice cold and was trembling. She's had to have obviously been so scared that she didn't realize what she was doing. Suddenly she let me go. I still had my eyes closed until I heard the most relieving of sounds. The old Chevy roared to life. I opened my eyes. The headlights were now on. The screaming and rocking had stopped as well. Both parents were dead silent as the only sound now was the growl of the old V6 getting us out of that darkened hell. My father didn't ease up on the gas at all, even as we exited to the other side of the tunnel. Remember, this is a mountain road that is very poorly maintained. Driving quickly, one risks actually causing real damage to a vehicle or even worse, losing control and veering off the road and into the river. My father could have cared less. About 100 yards away from the tunnel, my father gradually came to a stop and pulled off onto the side of the road. The three of us were utterly silent. Dad slowly opened the door and got out of the car. He walked around to the trunk and opened it. Now from my perspective, I obviously couldn't see much. Through a small window of space between the trunk lid and the rest of the car, I could see a little bit of my father, and I could tell he wasn't moving. My mother became impatient. What is he doing? Mom, my voice was fragile. Yes, dear. You were squeezing me too tight. I couldn't breathe. When? Back there. Honey, I haven't touched you. My mom's face went ghost white. After a short while, my father slammed the trunk shut and hurried back into the car. We're done fishing. We're going home. Now, my mother asked, what? Dad just cut her off immediately with a sharp shaking of his head, followed by his eyes flashing back towards me in the backseat. Whatever it was that he saw, he didn't want to discuss it with me present. We finally get back to the house and my father tells mom to take me upstairs before he unloads the gear from the trunk. Mom takes me by the hand, leads me up into the house, and tells me to stay in my room and not come out until they are done bringing the rest of the fishing stuff into the home. Dad and mom get done bringing everything in, mom starts dinner, and everyone kind of settled back into a more normal routine. I, of course, was still dreadfully curious as to what was in the trunk that I wasn't allowed to see. My father had fallen asleep on the couch and my mom was preoccupied with her cooking. Even at that age, I knew where they hung the spare keys and which key went to what. I grabbed the key for the old Chevy and went out the front door to tell my mom I would play in the yard while I waited for dinner to be ready. I pretended to play a little bit with some sticks in the yard to avoid getting busted by running straight out to the car. Once I had made a couple of glances at the window to make sure I wasn't being watched, I snuck around the yard hedges to where the car was parked. I slid the key into the lock and popped the trunk. The anticipation was one of excitement, not one of fear. My excitement quickly turned into a sensation of pure horror. I was barely able to breathe, seeing what it was I saw. The entire interior of the trunk upholstery was shredded as if a wild animal with claws was locked inside of it. There were dark red crusted stains spattered all over the tatters of cloth, and the smell, oh god, the smell. I was too young to know what I was smelling, but my older self now knows what it was that offended my senses. It was the smell of death. 
It smelled like dead rotting flesh and not from fish. I closed the trunk quietly and snuck back into the house. I never told my parents that I went out and looked at the inside of the trunk. They ended up getting rid of the car a few months later. They practically gave it away for the price that they sold it for. I can't say I blame them. Every fishing trip in that area then after, we turn around and head back the other way once we got to the tunnel. That was always the sign that we had fished all of the rivers we had cared to that day. I've revisited the area many times as an adult, and I still can't bring myself to go back in there. Just the sight of it sends chills down my spine. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more Miss Creepy stories.